if you're just tuning in, what have been your challenges that you faced with the legal system? Let us know. Let's hear what you have to say. Now, Fumilayo Asherolu is a thoroughbred litigator hmm. <laughs> and an ADR guru. She is a certified mediator and a negotiator. She is currently... Um, she currently presides and dispenses justice as a judge at the Justice at the Justice Court, a court reality TV show where she renders decisions in a television courtroom. Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to zero eight one eight zero three eight four six six three. So, when I was reading my write up by our dear um, now Vice President. Professor Yemi Yoshibajo, he was yeah. saying something about outdated sentencing procedures, lack of access to legal representations, I mean, for people that don't have, you know, that pro they're not able to, yeah, pro bono yeah. services and all of that, and lack of proper, properly trained prosecutors, you know, when we're talking about criminal justice, you know, so I'm now wondering, what exactly is the current situation of our sentencing procedures, you know, are we moving with the times, because when I saw the Sally, um, the, the PA to Sally, I can't remember Fahim. his name now. Yeah, Fahim Sally, his PA. I mean, he, this crime happened. Occurred. You know, within three, three days, days, they have already mm -hmm. mapped the area. They had done a lot of things, you know. And because I know we were discussing about criminal justice, you know, the police is involved. The, the, judiciary, the judiciary is involved. And the, prison. and the prisons. You know, so it's a collective work, okay. you know. It's, all hands must be on deck for us to have a, a smooth criminal justice system. That's why I was system. insisting on public institution. In the first way, the first point person is the police. Is the police. So if the police do not carry a thorough investigation, investigation what can the judiciary do? Mm. What can the legal system do? So I so, hear. So that's why I hear when Chengun was saying something about the issues about uh, what's it called the proper investigation. I understand all of they that. All, this, but yeah, you see, so when we now hear cases of judges co collecting bribes and all of that, the way, where do we place it? So I wanted to ask if we have, um, is Fumi Lyo there? Or if she's not there, we can yeah, ask, I, I was um, even going to ask about the, yeah. the, the, the role of corruption, right? How corruption has eaten deep into our judiciary system. Because I think about two weeks ago, we, ha we saw reports in the news um, where they were accusing the, the Nigerian Bar Association of uh, paying cleaners with hundreds of millions no, of no, naira. No, no, no. Or what's the story? Nigerian legal, Nigerian legal uh, uh, law, sorry, school, Nigerian law school. La Nigerian law school, sorry. Yeah. Not Bar Association. <laughs> I beg your pardon. But they me. <laughs> you know, we heard Nigerian law, law school, uh, I mean, being accused of paying, I mean, spending so much money with, uh, for cleaning services. And I'm wondering, and okay, that's the institution that produces all Nigeria. All the lawyers, lawyers in that you're supposed to bring people that are not corrupt. You're supposed to bring people that are supposed to stand by the so rule that's of law. So that's a part of the colorations, you know, public confidence. That's part of the thing the public can diminish the total confidence they have in the judicial system. I was even going to say that. We, I understand there is endemic corruption in the system. The court, the judiciary system is also a part of Nigeria. And we know all these institutions are engaged in this. What is the role of the Nigerian Bar Association? That is my problem. Okay. I think, the, okay. So I'm what's the back. role? <laughs> Shaka, yeah, are you what are they doing? What are they doing at the Baltic? Because lawyers are social of change. Whether we like it or not, whether the situation is enabling or not, we still have to do what we have to do. Yeah. And the common man looks up to lawyers. That is why I, I'm even going to talk about pro bono services. It's almost not existent anymore. Mm. Most lawyers is about that. I was going yeah. to talk about that because I don't know, like, I, I don't know anything law, so I'm con don't currently... Don't be scared. It's not Listen, that hard. It, it, well, it's, it does sound like rocket science. Why <laughs> no, I'm just saying not. So can I bring it back home to my department, which yeah. is um, entertainment. entertainment, actors, yeah. TV hosts, and all that. Now, you talked about pro bono services. I yeah. think uh, it was the vice president that spoke about it in yeah. his earlier um, article. Yeah. In his article. So now, we know that there is a lot of um, has sexual harassment um, cases. There was one that was trending a couple of weeks ago. And we often find out, like the average... Um, let me just be honest, the average upcoming actor in Nigeria is paid like 50,000 naira. Hmm. That's minus tax, right? So at the end of the day, you look at what you're taking home and you obviously know that there is no way, if someone harasses me, there is no way I'm able to afford a lawyer. So for people like this, what, what exactly is the, so, the role so of if, justice for exactly, them? How do they find how justice? Do they get I think we have because there. obviously they can't, yeah, I think they we don't need have to boost Mr. Shagun, are you there? Yeah. Yes, I'm here. All right, so do you want to make a comment on what Sandra just said? 
Um, I didn't get that. Oh, she was just asking about, you know, oh, I think you go I, ahead. I, I was asking about pro bono services for people in entertainment. First of all, is there, a, is there anything like entertainment law in Nigeria or intellectual uh, property? I think there should be You're intellectual definitely. property. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. So now for people who don't have the money to access, um, um, to get a proper uh, lawyer, what about the pro bono services? Because the average actor in Nigeria doesn't can't afford um a lawyer but they go through so much challenges people cheat them people harass them producers directors all these things happen what what what's their place what do they do uh, i think we do that a lot in nigeria we even have um, a body known as a legal aid council where people who don't have the uh, the means that can approach and they can take up the case for such people mm -hmm. but even in offices now for example in my own office we do a lot of mm -hmm. pro bono cases mm -hmm. for people that don't have the the means and they have a good case they you you you, you help them out and now mm -hmm. even as a as a lawyer aspiring to become mm -hmm. uh, a senior advocate to be admitted to the inner bar there are even mm -hmm. mandatory cases of pro bono that you have to show mm -hmm. that you have done mm -hmm for people but the, but before the you could uh, make up for the requirements to apply to the naba mm -hmm. so it mm -hmm. is it is ongoing i do a, i do a lot of pro bono but is that my that office do a lot of pro, pro bono cases everywhere yeah. because they, they, they just mm -hmm. as you we all know that the they, 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 they fingers are not equal there are some mm -hmm. that who mm -hmm. have good mm -hmm. cases maybe their rights have been breached yeah. their, their their rights have been trampled tamp mm -hmm. upon and of course they don't have the means so, so uh, sir, I think it's, uh, it's available this? everywhere. How it, do we it, access it, this uh, It's mandatory for, for somebody mm -hmm. aspiring to the NABA to have done mm -hmm. certain numbers of pro bono. So, and I, a, lot of, a lot of lawyers do that. Well, um, so I understand well, a lot of lawyers do that, but how do we access that? Because the challenge right now, yes, I hear you very well. And you go through Google and search. Yes, there are cases of people doing pro bono services, but how... Can we access that? There's a there's a there's a body known as Nigerian Legal Aid Council. So once you just Legal go to that body, it's underfunded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so it's like, it's underfunded. Do we have if we have Fumi Lyle there? Please, I would like to talk to Fumi for a second. Um, you are doing some great. Uh, okay, I think we're because I was going to ask the role of technology, right? Um. We see a lot, like, okay, for instance, uh, a few weeks back, some guys messed up my car. They hit me. They batched me. Um, Shagun, if you can answer this question. So, I mean, where do we start to use technology as a tool to fight crime in Nigeria? Because sometimes I feel that when you're trying to get forensics and all of that, it still has to be the hardcore. You have to go physically to the place, blah, blah, blah. You know, when technology is here, I mean, I still feel we're doing a lot of things that are outdated. You know, why can't we infuse technology, you know, in our judiciary system? Why can't we use that to get evidences and all of the things that we're talking about? Ah, ooh, we're moving towards that now. They're doing a great No, let him answer me because I'm, I'm not seeing it. Because yes. you still go no, to no, the no. police, they'll tell no, you no. they have to she, go she physically has, to a place. We are moving that. towards yes. it. We're we are moving it. towards that. Yeah. Look at even the issue that um, the uh, Attorney Generals of Lagos and um, the AKT, they took it to the court, to the court. Supreme Court for interpretations yeah. on this uh, Zoom, on this whether we'll be having uh, this, uh, you could have this... Uh, hearing, uh, courtroom hearing, virtual this, hearing. Uh, yes, the virtual virtual uh, hearings. I mean, of course, you, you see, we, 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 I know that major issues is even partly our laws. Because if we don't amend our laws, you know, these technology things are evolving. Of course, some jurisdictions have taken adv advantage uh, of, 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 of the technology ahead of us. But we are moving on. But the problems we have is that because of our, the nature of our uh, judicial system, we, we, we required a lot of amendments. For example, somebody was saying that uh, uh, there was a case that he conducted and at the end of the day, the day that the judgment was to be was to be uh, delivered, 
and that there was no light or certain aspect of things, maybe the final addresses, and there was no light, and the court had to sit in the chambers, I mean, in the chambers, and he opened the, 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 the windows, opened the door, everybody was there, at least the few that the chambers could accommodate. And at the end of the day, Supreme Court said, set aside that judgment. I think we have Fumilayo. Let, let's, let's talk to Fumilayo for, a, for a second. Sorry, um, Mr. Shego, uh, we've been having challenges with her here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great to finally have you back. We have a lot of questions for you. But first, let's move on to um, what our audience is asking you. This is from Nasiru, and he says, I am saddened by how long it takes for any high-profile case to close. Can we have a system with a stipulated time to close a case? Example, fraud and criminal cases. That's for Fumilaya. Are you there? Thank you for joining us. Yes, good evening. Good evening. On, on, for the, the judiciary has laws and regulations. We have procedure for the criminal justice. And it is something that is pending and that the legal practitioners are aware of. And well, that is what led to the advent of SDA. Okay, go ahead. Okay. This part of why, along the line, the SDA had to come up in order to address all the loopholes in the conduct of criminal matters in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. it's, been, it's going to be very difficult for the court to set a time limit within which one must conclude a criminal matter, simply because there are rules, the procedure, high court procedure, there are time frame for you to file suit in court for the other litigant, the, that's the, the respondent's lawyer will have to reply, there is a time frame for that as well. Then you must comply with all the rules and at the end of the day, the whole essence is to see that justice is done. And remember, in criminal matters, it's always presumed that someone is innocent mm -hmm. until proved guilty. Mm -hmm. If you can't prove the guilt, then you cannot jail the person. And the court believes it's better to have a thousand people go scot free than for you. I'm talking about accused people. You rather have somebody that is guilty go free than have an innocent innocent person Convicted. end up in jail. Wow. That's the position of the law. Okay. So the law will always take its time to make sure that justice is done. Even though we have some peculiar circumstances in Nigeria, okay, I believe well, that our laws are obsolete. We really have to move up. We need to embrace technology absolutely i absolutely agree with you all right let's move on to the second question um because of time this is from taiwa um it says where are people that would never go against any big ex establishment for wrongdoing because you know it is a dead on arrival case how do we start having or building faith in the nigerian judiciary Hello? Fumilayo, did you get the question? I didn't get the question. Can I have it again? Okay, go ahead. All right, so Taiwo is asking, we are a people that would never go against any big establishment for wrongdoing because you know it is a dead on arrival case. How do we start building or having faith in Nigerian judiciary? Okay, now we're talking about public distrust. Yes. Right, right on the legal system in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yes, go yes. ahead, please. All right. Okay. On that issue, I know, sure, we have some people that don't really believe in the Nigerian legal system because they believe they always make a brick wall. But it's not so. It's not so at all. Because, except we have some exceptional cases, I agree. Because I know at times it's always very difficult for you to enforce judgment against the government. And most times they flout the order of the court. We have issues like that. But apart from that, I don't really see why you can um, Hello? 
Yeah, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. I didn't hear you. Okay. I don't really see any reason why you cannot go to court to enforce your rights. Is your right? Okay. So we have a, 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 someone is asking. Right. Uh, Mr. Shagun, if you are there, someone says, Mr. Shagun, I agree with you that we have the problem of investigations not being properly carried out, but we cannot deny the fact that the judiciary system is corrupt. We should be talking about how this corruption can be tackled instead of denying our reality. That's a direct um, question. Um, question to you. So on that note, just one minute so we can wrap up because we, we ran out of time. Yes, I think um, everybody, whether you are a legal practitioner, whether you are even uh, members of the society, I think uh, if we can bring out all these corruptions, because for me, if you, you, if you have a good case and you present your case and, and uh, there is everything that go with your case, I don't see why you, I mean, if, if the laws are in, in, on your side, you definitely win your case. Okay. And I don't think there will be any uh, court who will twist it. I mean, except you, 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 have a, you, you, you don't have a good case. And you know, in Nigeria, this is an area that we still need to do a lot. Absolutely. It's not in every case that you go to court. Absolutely. And that is the problem. Okay. People even go to court, even for cases you know right from the, the beginning that it's, it's, it's going nowhere. But you still make efforts to say you just want to go to court, just want to go to court. It won't, it won't work. But of course, we could have a ways of ensuring that when we see those that have been asked that they are corrupt, then we should expose them. But Absolutely. it's not a blanket to Absolutely. say a uh, judiciary is corrupt. Thank you so I mean, much, Mr. Shango, for your time. I'm afraid I, I don't, I don't, we I don't have completely so. run out of time. Thank you so much, Fumilayo. We're so sorry about the network issues. We're hoping to bring you back, you know, to have uh, uh, yeah, more time to talk to you. Yeah, yeah quickly, Chisom. Okay, well, this is from Chisom and he or she, Chisom is she, a unisex she, yeah. name. Okay. Hi, guys. In my opinion, the causes of the crimes should rather be addressed, and this will automatically reduce the burden and on the, the legal, legal system. system. Yes. Yeah. All right, let me quickly. What, what would you say in, in, in summation? Because you think, are the lawyer here. Yeah, yeah, I think we're still going to go back to, we're still going to do a part two of this. Okay. We really need to trash a lot of issues, and that borders on the role, particularly for me, the, the issue I have with is with the MBA. I think the Nigerian Bar Association is not doing enough, especially in the area of rule of law. Mm. This present government, the administration, the federal government, has done a lot of things in breach of rule of law. And I find that a lot of times the, the NBA keeps quiet about it. So I think we need to do a part two of this. We need to go into the nitty gritty of the rule, rule of law. Of this. Yes, rule of law. Absolutely. And yes, I think we need we really need to do that. I just want to see justice, you know, yeah. the way we Reveal. saw. Right. Yeah, that's all. I mean, I mean it's, it's very easy for us that are non law. Okay, you are into people. speedy dispensation yes. of justice. And in I want speedy dispensation of, of justice, yes. Yeah. All right, so I think that's I mean, we've had a very, very Engage and chill. Now, please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been insightful and keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Way Show Africa or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you are saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. To deny people their human rights is to deny their very humanity. That's on Nelson Mandela. So let us give people their rights. I mean, we have basic things that we, we need. We need. I right, see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening.